Hey, Simon here and today I would like to introduce you into uh, fluids and especially how to add or assign velocity to them to the particles as soon as they are spawned. We will make two versions, uh, one where only the first particles have velocity and then later something like this what you see here. So let's get started um, with a new file. And what we create first is a sphere and just click it and click here in particles fluid on emit particle fluid and then here hit enter to make it perfect and then we get some some stuff created and when we um, hit play right now we will see some particles going and here i will set uh, some more um, some more keys we see and also the playback shall be real time so now we can hit play again and see something like this. Okay, that's cool. So and we want that these particles have some initial velocity. And there are uh, several ways to do that. Let's do the first one. Here we have the sphere and we have a volume which is created out of this. And here uh, we can set a point wrangle. Where is it here? Uh, and to to assign velocity to points, we need points. And when we uh, look here with middle mouse button, we see we have only one. And the reason for this is we have to change primitive to polygon. And now we got um, the sphere. I can show you here. Uh, before it was looking like this. Now it looks like this. And it has points. In fact, it's uh, 42 points. Okay. And now we can add something here and I have a little expression prepared it looks like this and we should see now that there are some velocity vectors we will go about the um, expression later I will explain it later but let's first um, check out here this is our our create surface thingy and in velocity volumes we can see uh, we can see the visual, visual, visualization and we can Un, uh, unclick this so that we see everything and I would like to have to longer but I don't see too much here let's see if I can uh, disable this ah, yeah, here here we see our streamers this is the velocity and basically that's it so when we play now um, one second we have to go out here and check this like so when we simulate this now uh, or we should have gone back to frame one then there's a little bit of um, velocity happening here but when we go into the dot network and hit L here to sort it then we can click on the uh, source volume and here is the scale velocity and we can hit for example 5 and this should give us a different expression yeah here now we see that the particles which are created first got some velocity but all the others they don't right all the newly created particles are not not getting uh, velocityed you could say okay so but first, let's uh, go back to the to the point wrangle just for a little explanation. What happens here is basically um, you, you could do the same with a no WAP point network, and why not do that? So, just for a bit overview, what we do is we um, we take the velocity here uh, and overwrite it basically. Oh, one second. So, how does it work? Oh, yeah, we take the um, point number as a random uh, seed. So the point number goes in here and then um, based on the point number a random value is created. And this value can be between 0 and 1 and we want to rearrange that value so that we say okay we, the input is uh, something between 0 and 1 but we want the output we want to stretch this basically this number um, space into that so that uh, we have minus one and one 
So that's basically what we want. But we want to have this three times because we want to create a vector out of this. And this you can do with float to vector. Oops. Float to vector. Like so. Juk. Juk. We created a vector with basically random values in, and this we output to velocity. And this should give us exactly the same uh, output, actually. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it works. It's um, Actually, it looks a bit different, uh, not so strong anymore, but, but you get the idea, right? Uh, it, it works the same uh, as basic principle. But now let's get to the version where we have the... Um, uh, where we have the velocity all the time. So basically I'm deleting this here. This can stay as it was. And now I create another sphere. Oops, another sphere. And this will be our force field. And in this force field, we do something similar. We basically have a sphere and uh, convert it to a polygon again to have some points. And then we create some normals. And then we can use an attribute wrangle. Another time, uh, we uh, I will explain this later, uh, but, but just accepted that we deal here. But, but this time we uh, change the normal, okay? The normal and not the velocity directly. Okay, and then we add a fluid source and here, since we um, change the normal, let me visualize that. First, we have to set this to um, stamp points. And then we have to, vel the velocity volumes, we have to set this to normal because we, we use the normals, um, which we modified a little bit, like I said, more about this later. And here in the visualization, we can unhide or uncheck this. And now we see um, that we got uh, yeah, really colorful um, velocity vectors. And in container settings, we set this to velocity. So, And this is basically our force field. And um, we create a null here and call it out, out force, for example, like so. And then we go into our dot network and um, here there is this flip solver and there is a pin which is called volume velocity. And there we will feed in a volume, uh, source volume, like so, we just connect it and select our um, force field out force here. Okay. And in here, Let's see if this did something for us. Uh, yeah, a little bit. So what happens here is you see, you see that these particles are moved around a little bit. So our, our, random, our random values seem to get in here, but the gravity is not working. So what you have to do, you could just um, here in velocity, you could just could do add because we don't want only to like override the old values basically. We want just to add our velocity values to the existing velocity, which is um, uh, uh, done by gravity or influenced by gravity. Here you can see that it works. We can also scale our um, velocity a little bit. And then you already see that it's exactly what we wanted, right? We wanted to have velocity on all spawned um, points over time. And as you can see, also the newly created ones receive uh, velocity values here. But I want to mention that here, this initializes source smoke, which is a bit weird for, for, an, for a fluid simulation. So when we set this to source fluid, then actually this is automatically set to add if we set it to uh, uh, to smoke and go back to none, then it should change automatically. Yeah, it's at now. But as you will see, we are back to our normal uh, behavior like before. And I found that you have to set in masks, you have to delete this one. To be honest, I have no idea exactly how this masking and, and these parameters work, but 
just trust me and then and this is important uncheck absolute and now it works again uh, it reverted our scale velocity so this we have to set again if you forget to set this absolute button even if you deleted the parameter it looks like um, it looks like this our velocity is not coming through so just uncheck this and then yeah we are happy and now we have some velocity on our fluids oh, one thing I forgot I wanted to explain the, um, the Wrangle expression right so um, let's go to our force field and at a warp point again so what we are doing here is um, is, is not too different from the other one but but a little bit so basically what we do we take the normal the existing normal and add something to it basically a vector and again we create um, a vector but this time um, we want to have something one second can I see this uh, yeah when I connect this again we will see that when I go to through the timeline here they change all the time okay the vectors change all the time so that's what we want and therefore I um, by, by the way you can when you point somewhere then you can with control B make this big that's really really useful okay so um, here we take the frame and add this to the point number so the frame is the current frame in the timeline so we add this and again we create a random uh, value out of this again fit this to a certain range to minus one and one like so and this we do again three times like so just copy paste it create again uh, float to vector hello it's not working float to vector thingy and this time we don't override um, the normal but we add this together and then um, output it as normal and this is basically should give us the same the same results as before as you can see these velocity vectors are always changing with every frame and therefore the spawn particles get different velocities assigned yeah that's all